I was going to ask you about how you felt shame in your own experience with your mum. Yeah. Oh, shame is a huge, oh my goodness. Yeah. That's a whole other, <laughs> that's another hour of worth of conversation. <laughs> shame. Um, yes, because, you know, I wanted, I wanted the mother who was baking bread or, you know, taking a shower or, or, you know, taking me places or giving me advice. Physically, what happened to her, she was a very beautiful woman. She ended up putting on a lot of weight because of the medication. As she got older, she actually lost her teeth. And when you lose your teeth, your face changes. Right. So she looked differently. But my father always looked at her like he did, I'm sure, the same day that they were married. I mean, it was just like this love. So I, I try to like pull, you know, pull myself out of that, that sense of shame, but it's hard to it's hard not to have that. I wanted the mom to come to school and, you know, to be with other moms at school. And they did that. Didn't. And then shame also like, well, why, why is it my family? Why, you know, shame and then guilt. But I do feel that, you know, we're here to, to live a life and everyone has something. And I do know people that have beautiful childhoods and sometimes they crave, they want something, you know, a little <laughs> rambunctious. Yeah. It's a little, a little, a little bit like it was too perfect. Uh, was <laughs> yeah, I need a little bit of the, uh, you know, inst- instability. Um, I don't know. It's just this is the journey we're on, and I really feel that. Oh, that sounds so woo woo. This is this is the life we have, and I find it more interesting though, talking to people that tell me about their problems and um, or or are open about things, and you know, as someone who is. I'm, I'm about to start teaching a class, um, a college class, a writing class on memoir, on creative writing memoir. And I want to hear the story about the embarrassment or the okay. shame, because if you share that story, there's someone else who's going to connect with that instantly because we all feel those things. And that's how we connect as human beings. You know, the story of how like, well, you won the championship and you're always doing this and it always, uh, Right, right. You know, is that real? And do you always win? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, to, to be so raw and open, I respect when people are able to do that. And that takes courage. I know a lot of people who kind of hold it all in and you can't force someone to let it out. But my my job literally is to help people open up like that. And, um, you know, either through theater, I produce a storytelling show where adults share their childhood diaries, love letters and poetry on stage. Embarrassing, yes but also beautiful because we all can relate to these places of just feeling like you don't fit in or feeling like a weirdo or feeling um, like a human being, which is so complicated. Your mom was a polyglot, which is amazing. And you said she, she would yell in Polish and my mom would yell in Spanish when we would go out because she would yell in Spanish. I, 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 started thinking, Oh, this is a blessing because no one can understand. And because she usually was very angry I thought I can get away with this. It looks like mom's yeah. yelling at me. She's telling me off and no one understands. The right. problem was, was when we would get to the shopping center or to the supermarket and I would have to go to another aisle. I was always with her trying to, you know, to calm her down or control a situation, which you can't, you know. And uh, so I would leave her for, what, 30 seconds and come back and see her yelling on her own or talking on her own and people looking at her weird. And there's no way to disguise that she's not mentally well, you know. So I felt a lot of shame. When I interviewed Mira, she said, well, something, advice that I would give is don't carry the burden on your own. Perhaps when I was younger, I would have sought out friends. And I it made me think of when I was in high school and I only told my best friend, I didn't tell anybody else. I had two best friends and my other best friend, Rebecca, I didn't tell her until we were well out of uh, high school. She was, we were both in college and my mom told her to get the hell out of our house. And I was, I felt so ashamed and embarrassed. And I said, Beck, you've got to go. You've got to go. And we ran out. And at the bus stop, I remember I, I said to her, I'm so sorry. I never told you that my mom has schizophrenia. And I remember she turned to me and said, why didn't you tell me? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I never talked about it either. It it just, it's something we didn't talk about. We just, you just didn't, it was a secret. 
Um, um, and I think that comes from shame that comes from not understanding that comes from, you know, fear of people rejecting or, you know, my mom. And that's the other thing too. Like my mom, Oh, this is gonna make me cry. Um, I remember she had a friend in the neighborhood and I would like play with her daughter, the, um, the neighbor's friend's daughter. Like we went to different schools, but then we knew each other because our mothers were friends. And then, you know, when my mom got sick, like her friend just kind of disappeared. And I just wonder, like, she didn't really have friends. And that's just, you know, so if someone's, yell I, I don't know, like this yelling, and, and this is the thing about emotions too. Like no one likes to hear someone yelling, but yelling, you know, comes from anger and anger comes from fear and, and, or sadness. And so, um, I wish we had patience with each other, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've worked with a lot of people who are mentally ill. I worked at a psychiatric hospital here in, 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 in Baltimore in Towson called Shepherd Pratt. And I taught theater, improv and writing. So I was there not as the therapist, but I was there as an artist. It was a really cool program. I worked for 10 years and I would go into units with children, um, day programs. So they were higher functioning adults, geriatric inpatient unit. And there was a unit with people with schizophrenia that I didn't want to work on initially. I said, no, I didn't want to go to that unit because I think it's too much. And then they finally convinced me that I think you of all people would be really good at that unit, effective at that unit. I, I almost look at, you know, as someone who was a therapist and who looked at the DSM and, and you know, this is, this is how we're supposed to be. And if you're outside of that, that means something's wrong with you. But what if, what if someone who feels elevated or maybe who's retreating, maybe that's normal, you know? Do you know what I mean? Like maybe that illness mental illness is, is maybe their super power. Maybe that allows them to stay up longer to complete a task or, you know, that there is also this fine line between creativity and, and madness where um, people that are incredibly um, sensitive, you know, how beautiful is that? But we look at that as someone who's not strong, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I don't know. So yeah, I, there's, there's so much, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm really grateful that you, you've allowed me to talk about this and to talk about my book and my experience um, because I just want people to know that they're not alone. You know, I, I really wanted to celebrate my parents' love and the love that I observed and lived, you know, with my dad and also just to talk about mental health issues because I think a lot of people, like we did, dealt with it secretly even now. And I think it's important for people to share and to talk about things because other people will, will find them and will connect. And I think that all makes us a kinder um, human set of human beings if we can do that. Right, right. I, I do want to ask you one thing before we finish. This question is inspired from the interview with Mira Bartok. I, I thought this was amazing because it's always good to turn what seems to be just hopeless and sad and painful, turn it around. What are the gifts your mom gave you? Oh my gosh, my mom, my mom gave me the gift of, of patience and understanding. She was an artistic person. You know, my mom used to paint and draw. And I think this sense of creativity is something that I, I this is very strong in my life. Oh, my mother was a dear heart, you know, she, um, what did she teach me? I knew she loved me. Like that's something that always shone through, even when she was kind of losing it and having episodes. I mean, not all the time uh, I would feel this, but sometimes she would reach out to me. Like I was the one, like kind of the shining star in her life. Um, so she gave me that sense, even though she wasn't able to in a traditional way, um, make me feel loved. Um, I knew she loved me. And so um, all I can do is just love her. It's very healing to do this. It's also very, it's a hard thing to do. It's emotionally, you get worn out. It does, it, it, it is emotionally taxing. You know, I think it's also very important to do this because as, as you were meant you mentioned in the beginning with the morning pages this is also another part of being able to release and and talk to somebody who does understand not somebody who says oh yeah that geez that must be difficult but you know your mum will get better 
how, <laughs> you know, I'm 42 and I've begged her to stay on her medication. And it's very different when you can actually talk to someone and, and say, Hey, my, my mom was yelling in the street and, and my mom did that too. Or just the experience that you, you mentioned of Mira's mom jumping out the window and your mom as well. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's an understanding there. Right. It's, an, it's an odd, it's an odd thing, but a beautiful thing too. Cause then I think we feel connected. What motivated me to do this was first to have uh, a space that I would have liked, like create a space that I would have liked to have had 25 years ago. And also it's, it validates everything that I have felt all my life the conversations that I have with my brother and I know that he's the only one that can understand the immediate family situation because he's he's my nucleus family and sometimes we talk and we laugh and we cry but beyond that like you said there's a sisterhood there's a brotherhood with other people that have lived through this because they genuinely understand well thank you so much Alex I think this was Far more emotional than than <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We're both <laughs> than um, what I, I had thought it would be, but this has been amazing. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you so much.